It's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and passing the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project requirement, a cloud development team needs to use service accounts extensively in their local development. You need to provide the team with the keys for these service accounts. You want to follow Google recommended practices. What should you do? So in this requirement, the team that is using these keys has a local development environment. And in giving them keys to work with service accounts, we need to follow Google recommended practices. In the requirement analysis, we can see that the team is using service accounts. So machines are talking to machines, apps are talking to apps, and there is no human login involved. They're using this in a local development environment, which means that the risk profile is low to moderate. So we have some flexibility in how we approach the solution. If it had been a production environment, our approach would have been much stricter. And when we say we need to give keys to the team, it could also be that we give them a way to generate their own keys. Even that approach should be fine if it worked. Lastly, we have to follow Google recommended practices. So we should be looking for some available guidance on the topic on what should be the right approach. Given those requirements, now let's look at the options. Option A suggests that we implement a daily key rotation process that generates a new key and commits that key to the source code repository every day. Now, a daily key rotation is a good process to have. It basically means that the keys that are usable today won't be usable any other day. So even if older keys are leaked, it is not going to have a negative impact on your system, on your project, on your organization. However, committing credentials to a source code repository is absolutely not allowed. We should never have keys or passwords ever checked into source code repository. Because typically source code repos have much wider access. The build teams have, maybe reviewers have, and therefore they should not be checked in at any point of time into the source code repo. Ideally, the keys should never leave the development machines themselves. So given that, we are going to eliminate option A. Option C suggests that we create a Google group with all developers. Then we assign the group the IAM role of service account user and have developers generate and download their own keys. Just by looking at the name service account user, it should give you some clue whether this is possible or not. Typically, when the name ends in user, it means somebody who is using some resource but without the ability to create or delete it. In this case, you can see that the service account user does not have a way to create service accounts or these keys. Therefore, just based on that, we can immediately eliminate option C. Option D suggests that we create a Google group with all developers. Assign the group the IAM role of service account admin and have developers generate and download their own keys. So unlike the previous option where it was service account user, now we have a service account admin. So that restriction is not there that we can't create the service accounts or the associated keys. Now, creating a Google group is a good way to manage multiple people with same roles. So when it starts off, it is looking good, right? We have got all these developers. They all need maybe some kind of permissions. A good way to do that is not to us assign it individually, but to create a Google group and add the members into that. Then we are assigning the group the role of service account admin. 
which means that they now have the permissions to create these service accounts and the keys. But the problem with this approach is that we have no way of centrally managing what is happening. These developers could create their own service accounts and keys, but then are they rotating the keys or are they using the same keys throughout this month and the next month, which means now it poses a huge security risk. Are they giving the right permission to these service accounts and keys? We have no way of knowing that. We have no way of managing it regularly on in a defined way. Or there's just excessive work in checking what each developer has done in creating these service accounts and keys. So given that, we are going to eliminate option D because this poses a security risk. Option B suggests that you implement a daily key rotation process and provide developers with a cloud storage bucket from which they can download the new key every day. So we already know that the daily key rotation process is a good thing to have. Even if you lose the key or somebody leaks the key today, from say tomorrow onwards, they won't be able to use that key and access any data. Since cloud storage bucket has IAM associated with that, we can put data on it and control who has access to that bucket. So we can again limit the access of those keys just to the development team. In this case, the keys are also centrally created and managed. So we can ensure that the correct scope is set on it and that the keys are rotated regularly. It won't be up to the developer to manage it, but you follow the organization policy and rules to ensure that the keys are rotated. Given that this is just a local development environment, therefore, they will have regulated control on who has access to these keys and also that it is rotated. Finally, looking at the Google recommended practice, Looking at an article from mid-2017, it is suggested that you consider implementing a daily key rotation process and provide developers with a cloud storage bucket from which they can download the new key every day. This is verbatim the option given in B. And therefore, that will be the right answer to this question. Now, I want to be a little careful with this particular approach though. Even though this is a right answer among these options, if you're going to use this in a project, I would recommend that you do more research. Honestly, I don't know the complete answer to this. What is the best way to approach this right now? Because in, it's been almost three years since that best practice came out. And now there are probably much better ways of managing this, maybe uh, using a key management store, internal or external, or some other new way that I do not know yet. So this is the answer for this question to choose option B. However, in a real project, please do research before applying this approach. If you're interested in picking up loads more learning on Google Cloud, go ahead and subscribe right away.